Hello everybody, uh, me again. I am back to give you the next part of our book, There's a Boy in the Girl's Bathroom. I did think that you'd see it back to front, because when I'm filming it, it looks back to front, but the camera must um, spin it around by the time I'm finished. So, um, to start us off today, I know I mentioned last week when you watched um, the video on Friday um, about what we're going to be doing and doing some comprehension and things like that. So what you'll need when you're watching this morning is a pen and some paper. Um, your home learning book would be fine. And what I'm going to ask you to do just today, just to kind of ease us into the book, is to look for a range of things while I'm reading. So you can have me reading to you and then hopefully be able to jot down the things I'm asking you to look for. So first thing I'm going to ask you to look for are high level vocabulary, adjectives, and when you hear them in the book, jot it down in your book. Next thing, adverbs. I'd like you to see if you can spot any of those. So adjectives, adverbs, prepositions. So where something is, des uh, describing its position, preposition. Um, I would like you to spot some verbs, okay, some doing words. And what's the last thing I would like you to do? Um, the last thing I would like you to do is any kind of fronted adverbials, any nice sentence openers, paragraph openers, um, because ultimately you'll be able to pick these up and use them in your own writing. So that's what I've asked you to look out for today. So that was high level vocabulary, adjectives, adverbs, preposition, verbs, and fronted adverbials or kind of some wowy paragraph or sentence starters. So hopefully you've had a chance to jot that down. I will put that onto the um, daily kind of working home learning sheet that, um, that you'll have as well. Okay, so we have finished chapter one that pretty much introduced um, our characters or some of our characters. Um, Bradley Chalkers was the boy who was sat at the desk at the back of the room. Mrs. Ebble was the teacher. And then we had, what's the other boy's name, the new boy? Uh, Jeff, the new kid. Okay, so I'm going to read you chapter two and chapter three today uh, because chapter two is a really short one. So otherwise, it wouldn't really be worth it. Um, so as I say, jot down as I read and um, I hope you enjoy it. Chapter two. There are some kids, you can tell just by looking at them, who are good spitters. That is probably the best way to describe Bradley Chalkers. He looked like a good spitter. He was the oldest and the toughest looking kid in Mrs Evel's class. He was a year older than the other kids. That was because he had taken the fourth grade twice. Now he was in the fifth grade for the first, but probably not the last time. Jeff stared at him, then gave him a dollar and ran away. Bradley laughed to himself, then watched all the other kids have fun. When he returned to class after recess, recess is another word for kind of break time, he was surprised Mrs Ebble didn't say anything to him. He figured that Jeff would probably tell on him and that he'd have to give back the dollar. He sat on his desk at the back of the room, last seat, last row. He's afraid to tell on me, he decided. He knows if he tells on me, I'll punch his face in. He laughed to himself. He ate lunch alone too. As he walked in from lunch, Mrs Ebble called him to her desk. Who? Me? he asked. He glared at Jeff, who was already sitting down. I didn't do anything. Did you give my note to your mother? asked Mrs Ebble. Huh? What note? You never gave me a note. Mrs Ebble sighed. Yes, I did, Bradley. In fact, I gave you two notes because you said the first one was stolen. Ah... That's right, he said. I gave it to her a long time ago. Mrs Ebble eyed him suspiciously. Bradley, I think it's very important for your mother to come tomorrow. Tomorrow was parents' conference day. She can't come, said Bradley. She's sick. You never gave her the note, did you? Call her a doctor if you don't believe me. The, doctor, the, the, the school has just hired a new counsellor, said Mrs Ebble. And I think it's very important that your mother meet her. Oh. They already met, said Bradley. They go bowling together. 
I'm trying to help you, Bradley. Call the bowling alley if you don't believe me. Okay, Bradley, says Mrs. Ebel, and she let the matter drop. Bradley returned to his seat, glad that it was over. He glanced at Jeff, surprised Jeff hadn't told it told on him. As he scribbled, he kept thinking about what Jeff had said to him. Hey, Bradley, wait up. Hi, I don't mind sitting next to you. Really? I've been to the White House. If you want, I'll tell you about it. It confused him. He understood it when the other kids were mean to him. It didn't bother him. He simply hated them. As long as he hated them, it didn't matter what they thought of him. That was why he had threatened to spit on Jeff. He had to hate Jeff before Jeff hated him. But now he was confused. Hey, Bradley, wait up. Hi, I don't mind sitting next to you, really. The words rolled around his head and banged against his brain. After school, he followed Jeff out the door. Hey, Jeff, he called. Wait up. Jeff turned, then started to run, but Bradley was faster. He caught up to Jeff at the corner of the school building. I don't have any more money, said Jeff, Jeff nervously. I'll give you a dollar if you'll be my friend, said Bradley. He held out the dollar Jeff had given him earlier. Jeff slowly reached out and then grabbed it. Bradley smiled, his same twisted smile. Have you ever been to the White House, he asked. Um, yes, said Jeff. Me too, said Bradley. He turned and ran home. So that's the end of chapter two. So we're kind of getting to know the characters of these two boys. Have a little think about what was in the blurb at the beginning. Um, Bradley Chalkers tells lies. So has he been to the White House? We don't know. At the moment, I'm assuming he hasn't been, but we'll have to wait and see. So chapter three is a little bit longer. I'm going to read you chapter three. So hopefully you've managed to jot a few of those words down so far. Um, I know it's not hugely um, descriptive in that um, paragraph, but just see how you go. Okay, chapter three then. Bradley opened the front door to his house, then made a face. It smelt like fish. You're home early, his mother said from the kitchen. She was a large woman with fat arms. She was wearing a sleeveless green dress and holding a butcher's knife. My friends and me, we raced home, he told her. A fat fish about the size of one of Mrs Chalker's arms lay on the board on the counter. Bradley watched her raise the knife above the fish and then quickly hack off its head. We walked down the hall to, he walked down the hall to his room and closed the door. Hey everybody, he announced. Bradley's home. But he was pretending that it was someone else who was speaking. Hi Bradley, hi Bradley, he said. Hi everybody, he answered, this time speaking for himself. He was talking to his collection of little animals. He had about 20 of them. There was a brass lion that he'd found one day in a garbage can on the way to school. There was an ivory donkey that his parents had brought back from their trip to Mexico. There were two owls that were once used as salt and pepper shakers, a glass unicorn with its horn broken, a family of cocker spaniels attached round an ashtray, a raccoon, a fox, an elephant, a kangaroo and some that were so chipped and broken you couldn't tell what they were. And they were all friends. And they all liked Bradley. Where's Ronnie? Bradley asked. And Bartholomew? I don't know, said the fox. They're always going off together, said the kangaroo. Bradley leaned across the bed and reached under his pillow. He pulled out Ronnie the rabbit, the rabbit and Bartholomew the bear. He knew they were under his pillow because that's where he put them before he went to school. What are you two doing back there? He demanded. Ronnie giggled. She was a little red rabbit with tiny blue eyes glued on her face. One ear was broken. Nothing, Bradley, she said. I was just taking a walk. Uh, I had to go to the bathroom, said Bartholomew. He was a brown and white ceramic bear that stood on his hind legs. His mouth was open, revealing beautifully made teeth and a red tongue. They were making out, announced the Mexican donkey. I saw them kissing. Ronnie giggled. Oh, Ronnie, scolded Bradley. What am I going to do with you? She giggled again. Bradley reached into his pocket and took out a handful of cut up bits of paper, his language test. Look, everybody, he said. I bought you some food. He dropped the bits of paper onto the bed, then scooped all of his animals into it. Not so fast, he said. There's plenty for everybody. Thank you, Bradley, said Ronnie. It's delicious. Yeah, it's real good, said Bartholomew. Don't play with your food. 
the mother cocker spaniel told her three children. Pass the salt, said the pepper owl. Pass the pepper, said the salt owl. Let's hear it for Bradley, called the lion. They all cheered. Yay, Bradley! Ronnie finished eating and then hopped off by herself, singing, do de do de do Then she said, I think I'll go swimming in the pond. The pond was a purple stain on Bradley's bedspread where he'd once spilt grape juice. Ronnie jumped into the water. Suddenly, she cried, Help! I have cramp! You shouldn't have gone swimming right after eating, Bradley reminded her. Help! I'm drowning! Bartholomew looked up. That sounds like Ronnie, he said. It sounds like she's drowning in the pond. He hurried to the pond to rescue her. Hold on, Ronnie, he shouted. I'm... The door to Bradley's room swung open and his sister, Claudia, barged in. She was four years older than Bradley. Get out of here, he snapped at her, or I'll punch your face in. What are you doing, she teased. Talking to your little animal friends? She laughed, showing her braces. It was Claudia who had broken Ronnie's ear. She had stepped on it accidentally. She told Bradley it was his fault for leaving his animals strewn all over the floor. He didn't tell her that Ronnie wasn't on the floor, but lost in the desert. Instead, he had said, who cares? It's just a stupid red rabbit. Mum wants you, says Claudia. She told me to get you. What does she want? She wants to talk to you. Tell your animals you'll be right back. I wasn't talking to them, Bradley insisted. Well, what were you doing then? I was arranging them. I was putting them in alphabetical order. It's a project for school. Call my teacher if you don't believe me. Claudia sniggered. Although she always made fun of Bradley's animals, she had really felt bad when she stepped on the rabbit. She knew it was Bradley's favourite. She'd bought him the bear to make up for it. What do I want a bear for? He said when she gave it to him. Bradley went into the kitchen. The fish, now cut up and covered with onions, was frying on the top of the stove. You want me? he asked. How's everything at school? asked his mother. Great. In fact, today I was elected class president. Your grades are all right? Yes, Mrs Evel handed back a language test today and I got another A. In fact, it was an A+. May I see it? Mrs Ebble hung it on the wall next to all my other A tests. Mrs Ebble just called, said his mother. His heart fluttered. Why didn't you tell me that tomorrow was parents' conference day? asked his mother. Didn't I tell you? he asked innocently. No, I don't think so. I told you, he said. You said you couldn't go. You must have forgot. Mrs Ebble seems to think it's important for me to be there, said his mother. That's just her job, said Bradley. The more mothers she sees, the more money she makes. Well, I've made an appointment with her for 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Bradley stared at her in disbelief. No, you can't go, he shouted, stamping his foot. It's not fair. Bradley, what? It's not fair, it's not fair. He ran to his bedroom and slammed the door behind him. Mm. A moment later, his mother knocked on the door. What is it? she asked. What's not fair? It's not fair, he yelled. You promised. What did I promise, Bradley? What did I promise? He didn't answer. He couldn't until he thought up why it wasn't fair and what she'd promised him. He stayed in his room until Claudia told him that he had to come to dinner. He followed her out of the dining room where his mother and father were already sitting down. Did you wash your hands? asked their father. Yes, Bradley and Claudia lied. Bradley's father worked in the police department. He'd been shot in the leg four years ago while chasing a robber and now he needed a cane to walk, so he worked behind a desk. He didn't like that sort of work and often came home grumpy and short-tempered. The police never caught the man who'd shot him. I hate fish, Bradley said as he sat down. So do I, said Claudia. Sticks to my braces and I taste it for weeks. Brussels sprouts make me throw up, said Bradley. They smell like old garbage, said Claudia. That's enough, said their father. You'll both eat what is on your plates. Bradley held his nose with one hand while he picked up a Brussels sprout with the other and put it whole into his mouth. What's all this nonsense about your mother breaking her promise? asked his father. Bradley was ready. She'd promised she'd take me to the zoo tomorrow and now she won't. What? exclaimed his mother. I never said that I'd take you to the zoo. She did too, said Bradley. Since there's no school tomorrow, she said she'd take me to the zoo. I didn't even know there was no school tomorrow until this teacher called me this afternoon, his mother protested. You promised, said Bradley. 
Okay, said his father. Janet, what time is your appointment tomorrow with Bradley's teacher? 11 o'clock. Okay, you can go to your appointment and still have time to take Bradley to the zoo after lunch. But I never did say I'd take him to the zoo. You did, accused Bradley. And we'll have to go in the morning. We'll have to be at the zoo. At, and we have to go in the morning. We have to be at the zoo at 11 o'clock. Claudia snickered. Why do you have to be at the zoo at 11 o'clock? He glared at her, then turned back to his father. Because that's when they feed the lions. Claudia laughed. She promised she'd take me to see them. She promised she'd take me to see them feed the lions at 11 o'clock. Bradley insisted. His mother was flabbergasted. I I don't even know when they feed the lions. Eleven o'clock, said Bradley. Don't lie to your mother, said his father. Really, said Bradley, they feed the lions at eleven o'clock. I don't tolerate lying, said his father. I'm not lying, said Bradley. Call the zoo if you don't believe me. Don't lie to your mother and don't lie to me. Call the zoo. Your mother said she never promised to take you to the zoo. Well, she's lying. And right after he said it, he knew it was a mistake. His father turned purple with rage. Don't you ever call your mother a liar. Now go to your room. Just call the zoo, Bradley pleaded. Maybe I did tell him I'd take him to the zoo, said his mother. See, said Bradley. Keep it up, Bradley, said his father. Just keep it up. You want to be a criminal when you grow up? You want to spend your life in jail? I see people just like you every day at the police station. Just keep it up. Bradley stared angrily at his father. Not all criminals go to jail, he asserted. What about the man who shot you? I said, go to your room. Bradley stood up from the table. I didn't want to eat this junk anyway. He stomped down the hall into his room and slammed the door. Then he opened it and shouted, Call the zoo! One last time and then slammed it again. He lay on his bed and cried. Don't cry, Bradley, said Ronnie. Everything will be all right. You'll think of something, Bradley, said Bartholomew. You always do. You're the smartest kid in the world. And that is the end of chapter three. So quite a lot's happened, actually, since obviously the end of the first chapter was the boys leaving school. Um, and quite a lot has happened since then. So have a little think in your head, a little summary of what's gone on so far to make sure that you're kind of ready for the next part tomorrow, which will be chapter four. Uh, and like I said, um, I hope you've been noting down those words I asked you to look out for. Obviously, you can listen to this again if you need to. Um, and I will make it nice and clear on the um, daily home learning sheet. But I hope you're all OK. Um, it's a little bit strange talking to nobody and just talking to a laptop but um, hopefully it gives you a little bit of um, something different to do in the day another person's a different person's voice I guess um, and it's nice to know that we will kind of read this book together I know I didn't really say it before but if you have got this at home or you wanted to get yourself one do feel free to follow um, follow along with me I always make it clear what chapter you're on and things like that um, and yeah that's it really I hope you're all well you're doing your Joe Wicks in the morning. That's what's getting me up and out of bed and um, and starting off with a productive day. So um, keep it going. Keep nice and active. Keep healthy. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow.